welcome to my home. Come on in. I really want to get outside first and get some things done in the garden areas, but I love to get laundry going before I head outside. And today I am getting some laundry done for my two teenagers. School's coming for my youngest and we're just kind of getting fall organized. Fall is just a great time to be motivated to get things done. So did I say my name is Karen? Did I say welcome to my home? I don't even know, but we're going to get on started out in the garden. I'm loving my knockout rose bush. So this is a little, this was the one that was half dead at Lowe's. And man, it's just a blooming. And I'm going to actually move that today, but this is going to have to wait. But I am kind of anxious to get rid of that too. I know there's some stuff that's usable under there, but we're not going to use it. So there's a little update of the garden situation. A couple of you mentioned cutting this back. So I'm going to do that for both the rose bushes. And hyssop's looking great. I realized I was mistaking honeybees for wasps because I'm so used to bumblebees that I think that honeybees look like bumblebees. They don't. Anyways, I also want to harvest basil and I'm going to dehydrate some basil in the oven. You, so many ways to do it. I mean, you can air dry them. You can microwave dry them. I like to oven dry them. It's just how I like to do it. So that's what I'm going to do. Oh, the weather is perfect today. I can't even tell you. I also cut some of these leaves off yesterday because the leaves are very fragrant on this lavender or any lavender. This is English lavender. So I think I'm going to do that again because I made a simmer pot. So it was like lavender smell throughout the house and not toxic to my cats. Things are looking good. That's coming out. And over here with my chamomile I wanted to show you because what I'm going to do, this started growing in the middle here as you can see. So I'm going to cut all of this and then I'm going to support this so that it, this won't happen again. Looks like a Halloween plant at this point. <laughs> and this basil is just amazing because this all came from one plant. See, I think that's actually a honeybee. And goodness, my chive. Like, I need to use this. This is crazy. And it's time to be drying the oregano. This plant, you know, I was going to transplant it forever. Never did it. So this the whole plant's going to get dried and we're going to give up on this one because this one's so healthy. And then this one I had harvested, it's growing back. So I'll keep harvesting from that one. I'll keep harvesting from this one, but I think we're going to let that one go. I also, after, I'm not going to try to do too many today. Usually one a day is all I can do, but this is the stevia plant. The deer ate it. It was all the way down. I cut the rest down and look how it grew back so beautifully. We are officially done with lettuce and we are officially done with this lettuce and everything here actually. I'll cut off whatever can be used like this kale and then we're done with this tower. The cucumbers are also never were that great. <laughs> Pine spills fell on it from a storm. So I'm going to cut this one way back so that the plant will focus here in the middle. And then, you know, before winter, I'm sure I'll be cutting it way back. Ooh, orange, baby. This other one, too, I got this branch that's like way the heck where it doesn't need to be. And then this I'm leaving because there's a rose, but this bush isn't as healthy as the other one. I feel like, well, it's been eaten more by deer for sure. But so these long branches are coming off. And then the rest of it will stay for now. And this piece here, I'm letting that stay since it has a bloom on. All right, here we are at the chamomile, <laughs> just to do the hack, hacking party. And I really want to be careful not to start too much today. I don't have a ton of time today, and I got a lot of laundry to do. School starts in a couple weeks for our senior in high school. So I'm kind of helping clean up 
some things, laundry and such. Need to do some mama tasks. I would love to do some baking. Not sure who's going to be around to eat it. But I am getting this all trimmed up and I'm definitely doing the basil. Whether I get to the rhubarb today or not, that's the question. There. That is what I'm learning. This is the lesson of, the, of 2024 for me is pruning and how important it is and to not be scared of it and to ask people who know when I don't know like I did with the roses. So all of this. Mmm. Smells really neat. And it's going. Maybe an animal would like to eat it. So I'm going to start with these. They're very woody. Um, you know, there was too much in the pot. Actually, originally I was just going to get rid of the pot is what I told you, right? But I do see some new growth. So, I'm going to cut these woody pieces way down and then just kind of see what happens maybe because there won't be too much if I just have little bits like that, right? And then I can keep watering it and it decides to give me extra basil. Who am I to judge? Right? And then this, I'm just clipping off pieces where I can see it's about to flower. And then I'll leave the rest. I'm not going to dry anything from this plant today. I'm just going to keep an eye on it because I know I'm not going to do a bunch of batches. It's too much for me. And I think the more you start to live a more gentle life and being gentle with yourself, listening to your body, taking the breaks, doing things you enjoy, I think the more you start to realize what your bandwidth actually is. This is a hot cherry tomato or hot cherry pepper plant it's getting tons that's exciting I am rinsing the basil leaves with cold water and then I'll take the leaves off and put them on parchment paper and they're going to go in a 180 degree oven for a, at least an hour and then I'll check them but the convection will be on, so it'll probably only take an hour, but sometimes it can take longer, so we'll just see. Shake, shake, shake. That smells wonderful. Plus, I did the lavender. I don't know if you can, if that picks up. Oh, I just spilt it. Oh, gosh. The lavender and water <coughs> pot, which I'm going to do again later today, and I can still smell it in the house because this is sitting here. kind of trying to pat it dry you know I think what happens is it's not completely dry it'll take a little extra time in the oven This smells really peppery. It smells different. It's really neat. So Robin made the bed for me this morning. I got the dishwasher running this morning. 
was super tired last night, so it didn't happen. So I need to empty my dishwasher. I did a ton of laundry. I was doing some teenager laundry, you know, just to help out. So I'm going to do some teenager folding to help out, help out. <laughs> once in a while. I get my hands in there, but mostly they do their own. Sometimes it's nice to just let mom take care of you, you know? I love to fold laundry too. So even though I felt like it was good for them to do their own laundry at the same time, sometimes I miss it and I want to just fold a ton of laundry. <laughs> Isn't that strange? But I guess we all have our favorite chores. Vacuuming is definitely one of them. put this in the bottom on convection. I do feel like that's cooked. While the basil is drying out, I am making my daughter's bed with the sheets that I washed and I'm also going to be vacuuming her mattress. You know, it's a funny thing about mom guilt. Mom guilt means you can feel guilty for not doing things for your kids and you can feel guilty for doing things for your kids. You know, when you're not doing things, you notice they're tired of going through a tough time. You think, oh, I should really chip in and help. And sometimes when you're doing things, you think, okay, this kid is old enough to do it themselves. So am I, you know doing something wrong to help? Should they be learning more responsibility? Am I taking that learning process away? Are they going to grow up and say, I never taught them to clean? Are they going to grow up and say, she did everything for me, so I never learned to do it myself? Or are they going to grow up and say, you know, I was going through a really tough time in life and mom wouldn't even help me with my bed? You know what I mean? It's just you just can't live under that. You just do the best you can. You make the best decisions that you can. You know, if you think about it, you've probably met adults in your life who went through really the most horrifying childhoods you could imagine. And they grow up to be these amazing people. You know, you could have someone who grew up in a hoarder home and they're super clean because of it. You can meet someone who grew up in a hoarder home and they are like the hoarder. So, you know, at the end of the day, when somebody becomes an adult, it really is up to them how they live their lives and if they are missing a skill they are capable of learning it you know as long as the brain cells are firing there's always hope to learn I remember homeschooling and I was always worried about gaps in education and I had to remember that when I was in college I took a Greek class because I was in Bible college and we had to diagram sentences in Greek. Well, I had never diagrammed a sentence in English and I went to public school. It just wasn't something that my school emphasized. In seventh grade, they started teaching you to really write, like getting serious about teaching you to write. And they never talked grammar again. So I forgot completely forgot grammar, flunked the entrance grammar test heading into college, had to take a remedial grammar class to make up for it, and then here I am trying to diagram in Greek, don't know what sentence diagramming is, so what did I do? I went to the library, I got out an English grammar book, I sat down with that English grammar book and I refreshed grammar, learned some grammar, and then started, you know, learning how to diagram sentences. And in the end, one of the days that my teacher was out, 
he actually asked me to teach the class and it was diagramming Greek sentences. And afterwards, he said that some of the kids said that they understood it better having learned it from me. And I think because I had to go from the ground up, I was able to help others who were coming from the ground up. But it just goes to show. And nowadays, nowadays, like I'm 80 years old, nowadays you can go on YouTube and you can get all kinds of homemaking schedules and literally do what I'm doing or you can watch what I'm doing and you're literally watching someone make a bed. You can learn to make, you know, how to make a bed. You can see, oh look, she's putting the blanket diagonal. Oh look, she's going to put this blanket straight across. I can do that too, you know. I'm there's just so many opportunities for our kids as they grow up to learn skills that maybe either were not taught or were not caught because some things we've taught but they haven't been caught. I also remember as a homeschooler, one of my kids says something really smart, you know, scientifically intelligent for their age. And I was like, oh my goodness, that's so awesome. Did you learn that when we did this? And they're like, no, I learned it from Magic School Bus. <laughs> you know, it just goes to show. So you can't get too wrapped up in these things. And if somebody tells you you shouldn't do your kids' laundry, you shouldn't make their bed, you know, it's okay. You can do that if you want to. It's a free, it's, it's a free country in that area. So go ahead and make that bed if you want to make that bed. And then I am also going to clean off a couple of surfaces. Now, in my next video, you're going to see me tackle the closet. I had just decided, and also as a YouTuber, there's times when they help me, and there's times where I say, hey, would you mind if I film this? And they're like, no, I don't mind. I, do you want to be in it? No. Okay, that's fine. So I just do it. So anyway... You're going to see me in the closet, cleaning out the closet, and what happens to me is I start by sorting, and I have a cardboard box on the floor by my left foot. That is for things that don't need to be in their bedroom. You know, maybe it's something that belongs to the whole family that they used and didn't put away. Maybe it's something we commonly store in the basement. You know, there could be a lot of reasons for that. So I have that. I also have a garbage bag for empty packaging and things like that or something that is clearly so damaged it's not usable anymore. So I start by sorting and then as I sort I start to get a vision for how it might be well organized and sometimes I might buy a bin like these clear bins at some point I bring it up to the camera I think it's coming right up I got them at Dollar General for six dollars and then I go back I get some that aren't quite as deep which I wanted the deep ones but they were out of them and I went to another Dollar General they didn't have any so the ones that aren't as deep that I use later in the closet those were five dollars a piece I don't always think that Dollar General is less expensive than say Walmart or Lowe's or other places Target that you could get containers I definitely think if you're going for the straw baskets a place like TJ Maxx is usually pretty inexpensive compared to other places so it's good to shop around and you can shop around online I literally went to Dollar General because it's less than 10 minutes from my house. That was 100% the reason. And now is a good time to be getting storage boxes if you find that helpful in reorganizing areas as you declutter. I'm also labeling all these boxes. So when they clean, I'm hoping because you can tell just by looking at this room that this person is visual, that they like to see all their possessions around them and the concern is if I can't see it it doesn't exist right but you can't possibly see every single thing now it is possible I know people who organize this way and they know where everything is so this could backfire but at the very least even if they want to put it all over the place like it is right now they can find it in the box and put it where they want to put it, but for now it is getting organized. So I start with categorizing and I'm doing like makeup in one, jewelry, jewelry in one, you know, hair care, skin care, and, and so on. So it doesn't mean this is permanent. These are inexpensive pantry labels. I can peel them off if I want to and reattach them onto something else. Um, when I use the plastic faux baskets in the closet, they don't stick the best. I had one particular basket where the label kept falling off, so I'm going to take some mail tape that's clear and just go over it with that. 
Pretty easy to remove though, so that's another reason I like to buy those and I also like to get a big old roll of them so that I'm not running out and then when I start to run thin, I'll just go reorder it from Amazon and that worked out really, really well for me. The girls also have an Alexa or Amazon Dot. I'm not quite sure what it's called, but I was playing some worship music, just something very calm and light and there's an air conditioner in there. Obviously there's windows. I was opening windows, airing things out, and then if I got warm, I would just shut the windows and I would put it on cool. So, you know, I'm just, I cleaned off this little bench so that I could sit down while I did this. I started out standing and quickly realized that that was not going to work. And whenever I need a break, I am careful to take a break. I would have loved to have gotten a lot more done. I did not fold the laundry because I decided, you know what? If they need to grab some clothing out of that clean laundry pile, that can happen. Or if they want to start folding things. But as I look through there and I thought, it's going to be a lot more valuable if I just get things organized and I maybe refold. You can see the clothes behind me in boxes. You know, not ideal for them as far as clothing storage, but they do have a ton of clothes. Once kids start working, I think especially girls, and I know I did the same thing. In fact, my mother encouraged me. She was like, you know what? Someday you're only going to spend money on your children. You're not going to spend money on yourself. So while you have some money and you're not paying rent and you're not paying for groceries, go ahead and get yourself some clothes. And I did. And it was fun. So they're kind of at that stage of life where, you know, hopefully they're saving, but also they have plenty of clothing. So I thought more valuable than that is for me to work on this on this day and those clothes, you know, it's actually two days later right now. Those clothes are still sitting in the clean basket and I'm okay with that. And you see what I have to the right of this makeup table. You see the gray kind of square, and it's got a couple things on top. I got that from Amazon, and in one, it's like um, one of those divided hampers. So what we do is on one side is clean clothes, and on the other is dirty. So what I had told my daughter is, instead of throwing things on the floor that you think you're going to rewear, so you're not going to wash it, just throw it in the clean side. And then when you get more time, you can be putting it away and then put your dirties in the dirty side. And then the bags, cloth bags, lift out. You bring them down to the wash, wash it, dry it, bring it right back up. And so that has worked really, really well. I need to get, this is um, Ava's, I need to get one for Yvonne. So that has been a bit of a game changer. I mean, does it still happen that stuff piles up? Yes, of course it does. You know, Really, kids today, it's uh, school, outside activities, jobs, time with friends. I mean, they are just moving every minute of the day. And that is also how these things happen when their room gets completely out of control. I remember it myself. And boy, could I pack a closet. And boy, could I pack under my bed. Oh my goodness, you probably could not even fit a little ant under my bed growing up because my mother would tell me to clean the room. And I would shove it all under the bed. I would shove it all in the closet. So if she just peeked in the room, it looked like everything was clean. So I completely understand how this happens. This makeup table, it's been a while since it's been, you know, emptied. So I hit it with um, some all-purpose cleaner. And then I went over it again with Pledge to kind of shine up the wood. These were inexpensive. Honestly, I wish I could buy them new ones. I feel like we're kind of over it. They're, what I'd love to do is get a door from Lowe's with some table legs and have the door go straight across and then put mirrors on top and put storage underneath in between you know where the two chairs are but uh, that's not a project for today and it probably isn't even a project for this year so we're gonna do the best with what we have get it clean get it shined up and then even if it does get full again at least it was clean. <laughs> and then these lights, the, the bulb lights you see around the mirror, I bought those separately and they stick on. So that was kind of nice and easy and then they plug in. Uh, I, w I would love to have battery ones. I don't know how long they would last if they were battery ones. So I'm taking like the perfume and the things that are a bit more knickknacky and decorative and I'm keeping whatever was in them in them. I'm just making sure that they're clean and dusted out. 
And so I don't really do a bef an after picture. Man, am I always forgetting those because my personality is just, okay, what's next? Okay, what's next? You know, I do take breaks, but I do also get into the okay, what's next thing. I had gone to Dollar General a couple times. That was also counting as a break for me. Um, and I just worked and my husband made supper, which was super great of him. And I just didn't worry about any other thing. And I got myself into the zone. Can you relate to feeling like, oh my goodness, I am in the zone here? That's how I was feeling. And um, it was honestly fun for me. It's kind of coping for stress sometimes is to sit down and declutter and organize and clean. You know, I've got seven kids, if you didn't know that. And the youngest is 17. This end table I'm cleaning off, actually, my grandfather refinished, so it's a very special piece to me, and very, very durable. I mean, he did the best job ever, um, but just as seven kids, I know it can look like you're, look, you're an outsider looking in at what I show you. It can look like, oh, she's got it together. She's really doing what everybody should be doing, or, you know, maybe not. I do get some people telling me that I should be doing something different in the comment section, so not everybody sees me that way, but I just want you to know, with seven kids, someone's struggling, someone's excited, someone is got their dream, dream job, someone just got laid off, someone... Um, thinks that nothing will ever be happy. Someone is elated. Someone feels guilty that things are going well because they're not going well for someone else. You know what I'm saying? And I'm not naming any specific circumstances, but what I'm saying is with seven kids and three daughter-in-laws and three grandchildren, there's many things going on at once. You know, I, I sometimes get dizzy with the thought of weep with those who weep and rejoice with those who rejoice. And what that means is you can be simultaneously rejoicing on one phone call and weeping in another and worrying in the next. And um, I just want you to know that when you go through stressors and trials in your life, to remember, we all go through it. None of us have this thing figured out. We're all just trying our best every single day. And we're all using our coping mechanisms, hopefully healthy ones. And this day, I was feeling overwhelmed. But... Interestingly, it felt better to make this space less overwhelming for my two teenage daughters than to ruminate over whatever in my life was overwhelming. And it helps me to feel better about whatever might be going on. This was super satisfying. And tune in because in my next video, as I said, we're going to tackle a closet. And that closet was very overwhelming, even though... None of it was my decision on what to keep and what not to keep, but I'm basically sorting and organizing and we're going to keep on going and the boxes on the floor, those are going to wait until I have the closet redone. So remember, as always, God loves you. I love you too. And I can't wait to see you next time.